A great pie stands or falls on its crust, and a great crust has to pass three tests. It has to taste good, have good texture, and it has to look good. Plus, it has to be easy enough that you don't end up throwing up your hands in frustration, running to the store, and grabbing one of those pressed and formed frozen things. Ugh, they are not fit for man nor beast. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make a classic simple pie crust that checks all the boxes and it'll be pretty to boot. Are you ready? The kitchen is now open. Yay! Hi, I'm Deb. And this is my kitchen. You know, family really is built at the dinner table, and I wanna help you to build yours with recipes, cooking skills, and tips on making your dinner table the family center of your home. Today, we're making impeccable pie crusts. Come on in, let's cook up something good. For your impeccable homemade pie crust, the ingredients you'll need are five cups of flour, one and a half teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of sugar, two cups of shortening, one egg beaten in a measuring cup and then filled with enough water to make one cup. The tools you'll need are a medium bowl, a large mixing bowl, a one cup dry measuring cup, measuring spoons in a half teaspoon and one teaspoon size, a dough cutter, a one cup liquid measuring cup, a silicone spatula, a knife, wax or parchment paper, a zippered freezer bag, and a rolling pin, whatever style you like. Pie pans come in different sizes and materials such as glass, ceramic, or metal. This first one is glass. It's an antique. It was grandma's and it's about 10 inches. I like to use this one for savory pies such as quiche or chicken or turkey pot pie. This one is heavy metal with holes in the bottom and it's about nine inches. I like to use this for sweet pies like pumpkin, apple, cherry, or lemon meringue and you can tell it's well loved. I use this one a lot. And this is a heavy foil disposable or reusable pan and it's about eight inches. Now don't confuse this with those crinkly foil ones that you get at the dollar store or the market. Those are really flimsy. I got 10 of these online for 12 bucks and at that price, it makes them perfect for when I wanna take pies to a friend's house because then I don't have to worry if I ever get the pan back. We're gonna start out with measuring out our dry ingredients. I already pre-measured four cups of flour, but we do need a total of five for our recipe. And I'm gonna show you, in case you don't know how, to measure flour. You need to kind of tap it, make sure that you don't have any air holes, and then use something nice and flat like this scoop or a knife to scrape across the top so it's level. You don't want it heaped at all. And that is our fifth cup of flour. I already pre-measured my salt and sugar, but I mentioned in the tools that you would need a half inch and a, not half inch, excuse me, a half teaspoon and a full teaspoon measuring spoon. So you would use those to measure out your salt, which stuck, must be humid in here tonight. Okay, we've got all of our salt in and our sugar. And then I'm gonna use my spatula just to give this a good quick stir. Okay, there's our dry ingredients. And just setting that to the side for a moment, and we're gonna bring out our large mixing bowl. I've already measured pre-measured one cup of shortening, but we need a total of two. Again, I saved this so that I could show you how to measure the shortening as well. Let me move this over to the side just a bit. It's so important. Ah, I got my spatula dirty. Mm. I'll grab another one. Sorry about that. Um, it is so important when you're baking. Remember, baking is science, so you have to measure very carefully. And when you're doing measurement of something like uh, 
vegetable shortening like this, I hope you can see how I'm pressing it down inside the cup so that I don't have any air pockets in there. Now I'm using vegetable shortening, but if you like lard, you absolutely can use lard in this recipe. I'm sure it would make for a very flaky, very delicious crust. We just don't use lard in our home. Um, a lot of people like a butter crust. I've never tried it, but I bet if you used butter flavored Crisco, that would make a really nice butter flavored crust. If you try either the lard or the butter, send me a tweet or a message below. I would love to hear about it. Maybe we'll give that a try on a future show. Um, in the meantime, see, I have leveled this off as well, and we're gonna scrape that into the bowl. This is greasy, nasty, messy stuff. Sorry about that. Um, when it comes to cleanup, you're gonna wanna use some really hot water and some good grease cutting dish soap, and then it'll clean up real easy. Okay. Get these guys out of the way. And now we're taking our dry ingredients that we had mixed together, and it's going in with that shortening. I actually stuck the bowl in the shortening. Nice. Okay. And then we're going to use this pastry cutter or sometimes it's also called um, pastry cutter or scraper. It has several names, but it is either wires like this or it might be like narrow strips of metal. And just mixing and kind of chopping down through the dry ingredients and the shortening and I just keep moving around and it's going to take me a little minute if it's if my shortening starts to gather on here I'll even get my fingers in here and knock it back off the recipe says to mix it until it's pebbly so what they're saying is they want it to look like little pebbles and you have to be mindful, careful. Whoa, that was interesting. Let's pop that guy back in there. Didn't expect that to happen. Okay. Um, be mindful about making sure you get all of your dry ingredients incorporated with your shortening. And if you need to, spin your bowl around so you can get a different angle on it. It's just about how I want it. This, I'll tell you, is the hardest part of this whole recipe is getting your shortening and dry ingredients mixed together. So if you can, if you can do what I'm doing here, you can make homemade pie crust. How about that? Doesn't seem so bad, right? Okay. So let me show you, I'm just going to kind of scoop up a little bit. See how it's little, little balls. That's what they mean by pebbly. Now I'm just going to set this to the side for a minute and we're going to take our liquid measuring cup and we're going to crack our egg into it and I owe you an apology when I told you the tools I forgot to mention it'd be nice to have a small fork because you want that egg to be slightly beaten so I'm just using my fork to do that and then I'm going to take some water I'm going to get down here so I can see the level of the water and I'm filling up on top of the egg to make a total of one cup of liquid. Now this is going in on all of our pebbly dry ingredients. Okay. I'm going to use my spatula and I'm going to mix this all together. Remember, you got to make sure you get all of the dry stuff off the bottom. And 
I'll be honest with you. Um, I often decide I'm tired of messing with the spatula and I get right down in there with my hands and that's probably where I'm going to go next. Um, I like to keep my nails short in the kitchen anyway, so I'm just, I always wash my hands before I cook, so my hands are clean. I'm just going to go in there with my hands. If you don't like that idea, you can use some food grade, food grade um, gloves, the, the just the plastic disposable ones, and get in there and mix up your dough. Yes, you're seeing things go flying. Gets a little messy in the kitchen sometimes. It's a contact sport. <laughs> and see there's some dry down underneath. You see that? So I'm going to keep mixing until I make sure all of that is incorporated in. And I find that much easier to do using my hands than trying to get it all with a spatula. Now this looks like a lot of dough. That's because it's enough to make multiple crusts. This is not just for one pie. That's one of the reasons I love this recipe. Ugh, I'm making a mess here. Um, I said it, it checked all the boxes. It tastes good. It has a good texture and it looks good. The bonus that it has is I get depending on the size of the pan, either four or five crusts out of one batch. And I'll show you how to prep them so you can freeze them and you can keep them for months. And then whenever you're in the mood for pie, you just go in and grab one and you're all set with a homemade beautiful crust. Okay, I think just about got it all incorporated. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and try to flatten it out and even it out so I just have my dough kind of evenly spread in the bowl. Now as I mentioned, this is for multiple multiple crusts, four or five, depending on the size of pan I'm going to use. You remember that big glass one I showed you, grandma's pan? That's a 10-incher. So if I was going to be making 10-inch pies, I would probably cut this in quarters, just four pieces. But I'm going to use those small ones, like I'm taking pie to a friend's house. So I'm going to cut this in fifths. So it's a little tricky. I'm going to start at the middle, come out to the edge, and this is, this is not science, this part. It's, uh, it's just kind of eyeballing it. So there's one piece, there's another one, so there's two. And if you feel like you didn't get it just right, as you're rolling them out, steal some dough from the other one and even it out. It's okay. I'm, I can see right now that these are not exactly even. I'll send a little over with this one and it'll be all right. There we go. Okay, next step is that we're going to prep these to go into the fridge or freezer. And in order to do that, I always pre-tear my uh, wax paper or my, um, what is that, parchment paper. Um, and I'll just show you, I try to make it about that size, it's, I don't measure it, it's just basically it's a square. And for each crust it takes two squares. So I'm going to grab so you can see I'm going to grab one of these out of the bowl and I'm just going to kind of press it into a ball. If any pieces fall off, I'm just going to pick them up and incorporate it back in. And then just between my hands, I'm just going to press it down into somewhat of a disc 
and I'm going to put it on my wax paper and then I take another piece on top and continue to press it out. So it's, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe six to seven inches across. And then I take both pieces of wax paper together and I just fold it up and wrap that guy up inside. And then I get my freezer bag and in it goes. I'm going to do that with the other four pieces. I will have five crusts that I'm going to pop into my freezer. As I said, they're good for months, but I want to get into one tonight. So I'm just going to put four to freeze and I'm going to take the fifth one and pop it into the freezer for maybe an hour just to get it good and chilled. And then I'll show you the next step to making a pretty pie crust. Okay, we're back and our dough has been in the freezer for about an hour. We wanted to give it an opportunity to get thoroughly chilled but not frozen. I want to draw your attention real quickly. If you look carefully through the paper, you can see some little white dots. That's just from the shortening. I don't want you to be alarmed should you pull your crusts out three months from now and see this and think, oh my gosh, they're moldy, they're bad. No, nope, it's perfectly fine and ready to use, so let's get about it. Now remember, this is between two pieces of wax paper, and that's exactly where we're gonna leave it for now. If you've ever tried to make traditional pie crust, it involves a bunch of flour, flour all over your uh, rolling pin, and it's just a big mess. This involves none of that, because you've got the paper, and you're just gonna roll it in the paper. It's one of the things I love about this crust. Now you can see it's a little difficult. It's because it is so cold. Now, if you choose to have some in your freezer to the point of freezing them, say you've got them in there for a few days, weeks, months, um, when you're ready to use them, you need to pull them out and set them on the counter about an hour before you want to start rolling them to give them a chance to thaw out. You don't want them room temperature. You still want them cold, but you definitely can't roll them when they're frozen. Another thought is if you're afraid you'll forget to do that, and you're planning on making pie tomorrow before you go to bed, pull it out of the freezer and just put it in your fridge. And then when you're ready to make your pie, you can pull it out then. Notice how I keep changing directions. What I'm trying to do is roll it out, make it thin, but have it keep some semblance of round. I don't want it to be this long stretched out thing because I have a round pan to put it in, so I'm shooting for round. Um, it's so cold I'm having a little difficulty with this pin, so I'm gonna switch to my trusty little wooden one. And I'm also wanting you to know that you don't need real fancy tools to do this. I've got an olive oil bottle over on the counter that's long, tall, and cylindrical. If I didn't have a rolling pin, I could even use that. The point is it has to be cylindrical. If it's tapered at all, you're not going to get a nice flat crust. Now it's spreading out pretty nicely, so I'm going to give it a test against my pan for size. So I'm going to take my pan. I'm using one of the uh, disposable foil ones, like I'm taking it to a friend's house. And you can see I've got crust all the way around. Um, but I think I would like to pick up maybe about a quarter of an inch more. And it also looks a little thick over here. So I'm just going to roll it just a little bit more. See, this isn't hard. And the next part's kind of fun. Kind of like playing with Play-Doh. If you ever did that when you were a kid. 
Okay, and see some of it's peeking out around the edge? No worries. Even if a little, it sticks a little, I'll just push it back in. This crust is quite forgiving. Okay, so I've got approximately an overage of about an inch all the way around. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off my top sheet of paper. Now notice there's a little split over here. Again, very forgiving. As I work this, I'm just going to kind of push it together using kind of the Play-Doh method. Um, so next step is to get my hand underneath it and pick it up. Put my pan in the center. And we're going to one, two, three, flip. And if I got it centered, I'm really lucky. It doesn't usually happen, so don't feel bad if it doesn't. You can kind of shift it around if you need to. And then now you've got the paper side up again, and it probably could have come this way a little more. So see, I'm gonna scoot it over because that paper is keeping it stable. I can move it around if I need to. And I'm using my finger on the paper, spinning my pan if I need to, to press that crust in against the side walls of the pan all the way around. And now we're ready to take off the other piece of paper. Now some folks would tell you, get a knife and cut off the edge, but I don't like to do that. I like to go ahead and roll that edge under. The reason I like to do that is I'm building a solid wall of dough that's going to help my pie hold its shape and also hold the filling because I like to put lots of fillings in my pie. And if I don't have a good wall on the top, it might fail and have my filling leak out. Now I can tell you as I'm going around, I can feel that some areas, like in here, are rather thick, and then over in here, it's really thin. Part of that was I didn't get it totally even when I rolled it out, and then the other part is I probably didn't get it exactly centered. But again, this crust is forgiving. Now that I've got it all turned over, I'm going to show you how to fix the thick and the thin so it's more... Um, even all the way around. So I'm going to start where it's kind of thick and I'm going to squeeze and just very gently start to pull it away from the thick part and move the dough around the pan. There's another part that's a little thick. You can see real here it's really thin, but here it's thick. So I'm just going to Gently keep, I'm just squeezing like this and moving my pan. And I might have to go back where it's thick and move it some more. Don't try to do it all at once because then you'll rip and tear it. If that happens, push it back together, smush it, and then keep going. I remember old school pie crust, if it tore, it was such a pain. You had to get it wet with water. You had to try to patch it back together. That was about the time I quit making my own pie crust and started doing different things. Then I ran into this recipe and I have never gone back. Okay, there we go. That's pretty even. A little thick over here still. Okay, now this is the fun part coming up. This is where you get to make it pretty. There are all kinds of methods of fluting a pie. Some of them simple, some of them pretty fancy. You can simply just leave it like this or you could take a fork and smush it all the way around and you just have all these little fork prints, but it's not that difficult to actually flute it. I taught my seven-year-old granddaughter. All I did, or all I'm going to do, I'm going to show you one way on half and a different way on the other half. The first half, we're just going to make little triangles by using my right hand like this and my index finger like this. I might even involve my thumb as I go. So here's the first one. 
I made a little point. Then I'm going to put my thumb in that point, this thumb in this point, and do it again. Move over, thumb in the point, thumb in the point, do it again. And you have to keep turning your pan. Thumb in the point, thumb in the point, do it again. Point, point, push it again. Just keep putting your thumb in the point of the previous thumbprint or fingerprint. See, that's not hard. Once you understand what it is, it's actually pretty simple. Okay, we're halfway around. So now I'm going to switch methods. That's just a regular pointed crimp. Now I'm going to show you how to do a rope. And this is even easier. It only takes one hand like this. I'm pinching this, the pad of my thumb against the side of my index finger like this. Doesn't that look cool? I love that one. And it's really easy. Look, it's just one hand. Now, it might look like it's getting a little thin. It is. It's okay. Um, this dough will kind of rise up as it bakes, and it'll be nice and thick. I'll show you when it comes out of the oven. But there's one other thing I want to show you before we get to that. This is fully crimped half and half and ready to fill with your favorite filling. If you were going to do a cream pie, you'd have to bake it first, and we'll show that sometime in a recipe for a cream pie. But anything else, it's ready to be filled and popped in the oven. Now, here is a package of those pressed and formed nasty things that taste like cardboard. I want to compare what it looks like side by side. Now, I can, oh, and look, it even comes in the crinkly pan I was warning you against. Now, I can put exactly the same filling in both of these pies, and this will be off the charts with any judge in your family or a professional judge, the favorite pie. Because as we said, a good pie stands or falls on its crust. So we're going to fill it and then I'll be back in just a minute with a surprise. Okay, we're back and I promise you a surprise. Now, I can't very well make a crust and not put anything in it. So I spent about 10 more minutes and whipped up some filling real quickly and popped it in the oven. And we have a beautiful, fresh, homemade pumpkin pie. And I'm telling you, I've been smelling this thing for a long time and it's killing me. It smells so good. But before I crack it open, I need to show you a few things. First of all, I wanna show you along this edge. This is the points that we did first. I'll give you a little twist so you can kind of see those little triangles there. And then as this comes around, this is the rope section. That's the one I, I really like that one a lot. And remember, that was super, super easy to do. Now I have a confession. If you're looking closely, you'll see there's a little sniglet right there. That's because as the pie was baking, you could see the top of it was starting to brown. And I was very happy with the level of brownness of the crust, but the pie filling was still really jiggly. It wasn't done. So I tented it with some foil and some of the foil touched the top and it broke the skin off. So, oh well. It gave me a little taste of it when I pulled it out of the oven and it was really good. And that's the piece I'm gonna cut out and taste right now anyway. Let's give it a taste. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. How is that for a pretty piece of pie? And of course, you cannot have pumpkin pie without at least a little bit of this stuff. Unless maybe you're eating it for breakfast, which I often do, then I'll skip the whipped cream. Okay, no more waiting. Mm. 
Mm. That crust on the bottom, so tender, so flaky, and crispy. It's not soggy at all. I'm going to go ahead and try this end, too, because I want to get some of that thicker crust at the top so I can appreciate that texture even more. Mmm. That is the taste of fall on a plate. And I hope you've seen, it is really not that hard to make your own crust. You can do it. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing. And thank you for sharing our videos so we can help as many families as possible. Because family is built at the dinner table. And if you feed them, they will come. All for the family.